Hello everyone, my name is M10, welcome back to Planet Zoo. Today we are working on another speed build, as you can see from the title just there, we are working on a bongo exhibit with a cafe attached to it. Yes, so we're continuing to work on the tropical trail that I, the previous episodes have been part of, uh, such as the mandrills and the Nile monitor. For those of you that don't know what a bongo is, it is a type of antelope that lives in the African rainforest. So we're going to be building an enclosure for that. Uh, and also, just at the beginning here, we're going to be working on a couple of little, uh, little, little guest services so that the guests want to be drawn towards this exhibit rather than just wandering off to the other places around. Um, so I've got a cafe. That I'm setting up I've got you know drinks benches toilet just that sort of thing because uh, this game is very complicated uh, and very detailed and the guests need to be looked after otherwise they just won't bother coming to certain exhibits so as you can see I am NOT creating my own cafe shells I don't know I really like the the new world shells I think they fit in very well with the style of the zoo and most of the New World construction furniture and all, all, of, all of that. I think the theme fits very well across all sorts of biomes. Uh, it's very modern looking. However, I know it's not exactly from the African region and this section is supposed to be an African rainforest. But, I don't know, I'm, I'm happy with how it looks. Um, and yes, I know a lot of you will be like, oh, you got to make your own, you got to make your own uh, assets, I guess. Uh, I think that's the technical word for it. But, I mean, there's a lot of good assets in the game um, that work functionally and they look aesthetically very nice. Uh, and also there's plenty of stuff on the Steam Workshop, uh, which I've already used in some of my other exhibits, like my Reptile House. I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, my Reptile House in this is... One I found off the Steam Workshop. I think it's another YouTuber's, but I'm not sure. I'll have to double check that again. Um, but I, I think it's... I, I, I really like how integrated the Steam Workshop is into this game already. I think it's really good to see that people can just put their assets on there to share with other people. I think that's fantastic. Okay, so now that I've finished with the cafe, given the guests a nice little area to look out over onto the exhibit, I'm going to start working on the actual bongo exhibit. So, I'm just trying to figure out how large it's going to be. It said in the Zoopedia that the bongos only need about 300 square meters of space. I think that's very small considering that they're decent sized animals. So, I'm going to make it a little bit larger. I'm going to make it close to uh, like 1,000, 2,000 square meters of, of area. It's going to be larger than the Nile Monitor enclosure. I also wanted to make it nice and open. I'm not going to I'm not planning on having a barrier out the front, although as you can see that doesn't entirely work out to begin with, so you'll see that in a second. But I'm um, I'm setting up a rock barrier so that the bongos can't climb out, but so the guests can look in. Uh, it also says that the bongos are very shy animals, so I have to make sure that they have plenty of hiding spaces away from the guests and they don't feel that they're uh, being too too closely monitored by the guests because that leads to a lot of annoying issues where the animals feel stressed it's a it's a it's a whole thing but i think so far um th given this as a post recording uh there hasn't been any issues with the enclosure so as you can see i'm about to add water and this was my big mistake early is the height of the water level. It's it's very high and that leads to a couple of little issues. Um, but they do get fixed but you'll, you'll see. So currently I've decided to put in a null barrier. Um, it, it also means that the guests sitting up on the cafe can look out over onto the bongos and have the nice natural barrier there not want not worry about you know the animals escaping. Um, and as you can also see, I, I wasn't happy with how the enclosure looked shape-wise. It was it was it was a little bit too wonky. Um, I, I like giving the enclosures straighter edges 
to some extent I don't well, if, if I was going to go for an abstract shape, I'd need to use the curve tool. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, it's a really good tip to start your enclosure, especially in sandbox mode if you don't have to worry about money, with brick because you can curve the brick barriers. There's, there's a little option for that. Whereas with the wooden and... I don't know if it... I forgot if it does for stone. But with wooden barriers, you can't curve it around. That's a little bit of a problem. I, I like... Uh, I hope they fix that in the future, or, or sorry, not fix it, I hope they change it in the future so that it is possible, especially considering it's logs, it makes sense that you can, you know, curve the logs in a different way, uh, but, yeah, either, so what you can do is you can create a brick barrier to begin with and then change it over into a wooden barrier or a, a barrier of a different material if you're looking for a curved habitat exhibit. Just a handy little tip for you. So as you can see, as of this moment, I'm looking at hiring staff. I usually like to have one or two keepers per enclosure, uh, and a caretaker for an enclosure, a vet, a mechanic. Uh, yeah, here's, here's the problem. You can see the bongos are trying to escape as I speak, and I quickly notice that and try and fix it up by adding a barrier, but... But... Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit too late. As you can see, it just jumps out. It was already already a problem there so um, kind of have to keep the barrier up uh, at this stage so always always check the navigational area of the animal before the second you let it into the enclosure so that you don't have to worry about problems like this remember to use the little heat maps they are very useful anyway back to uh, what I was saying about the staff uh, I have used the same staff room asset that I made earlier like way earlier at the start of the zoo I've, I've used that for almost every single staff room so far and it's great it's a great asset I um, it's it's very functional it's got all the correct buildings and a power and water source however what I didn't realize was happening until well after this uh, is that it was causing a negative impact on guests I totally ignored that heat map and that's definitely something you should look out for the guests will not walk through a certain area if they have to walk past a power source or a water source or something like that it's really frustrating uh, especially if you have if you require a power source in a certain position uh, there are ways around it I know you can use solar panels but they have a very very limited uh, range so uh, eventually I managed to figure out what was the problem because none of the guests were going into the tropical trail and I was confused as to why because there was plenty of exhibits in the area but yeah I sorted that out so a, a, a little tip is move your power sources further away from the path uh, have it towards the back of the staff room and just make sure it's not overlapping with the guests so right now, I'm finishing up a little shelter for the bongos. Like I was saying earlier, they are very shy, so I have to give them plenty of room to avoid the guests. Uh, it seems like they preferred the shelter, or the, the natural rock shelter on the other side. Uh, they didn't seem to use this one very much, but now it's nice, looks, looks like it fits in quite well, and it's a shelter I can use in other habitats as well if I need it. I can just save it as a blueprint which is a very handy feature in the game. I just want to give Planet Zoo props for a second for adopting the blueprint feature. I don't know if they have that in uh, Zoo Tycoon, Planet Coaster, I don't know, Planet Coaster and stuff like that, but it's a very handy feature. So, especially when you're making little uh, assets that you just need to duplicate uh, a bunch of times to create a bigger asset, it is so useful. And yeah, I just want to give them props for that feature. There are plenty of fantastic little features in the game that you just overlook, but they are really, really helpful. So one thing that surprised me is the bongos don't actually like that much long grass or short grass. They prefer much more soil in their enclosure, which I found surprising. Also, as you can see here, I'm dropping down the water level just a little bit so that the bongos can't escape and I can remove the glass barrier which I think will be very... I, th I think it looks a lot better without it, personally. Um, and then just always make sure to check the navigational map to see if it works. Yep, see, it's all fine. Uh, another little tip I have, if you want to add some more diversity to your African 
environments where because you can't add the dead trees uh, the tropical dead trees don't well i mean you can but it says the it says it's the wrong type of tree what you can do is you can put in an upside down kapok tree and i think it looks fantastic I forgot where i saw this from i think it was from no no it was from the asset uh that i the climbing frame that i used for the mandrills that i got the idea and downloaded that off the same workshop but they did an upside down kapok tree and i thought it looked fantastic so You'll see it in a whole bunch of my enclosures now. I've just got a couple of them lying around. Uh, you can also do similar things with upside down mangrove trees because they have the roots sticking out. It looks pretty pretty cool. Um, so yeah, just a couple of little tips like that. Just make your exhibits feel more alive and and, and just, uh, I don't know, I guess, I guess diverse in the life that you've got with so yeah, just doing the last finishing touches to the enclosure now. I hope you all have enjoyed. If you do want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, comment, smash that notification button, share with your friends, do all that good stuff. It's a lot to say, I know. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. And I'm going to finish this up now and leave you with some cinematic shots of the enclosure. I hope you enjoy. Yeah, see you next time. Thank you.